Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about home theater acoustics. Those of you that follow me know that I'm always talking about usage. What is the usage of the room? Is it home theater? Is it a personal listening room? Is it a control room? All usages have different acoustical requirements. They have different acoustical treatments. There is some commonality, there is some overlap, especially in the low frequencies. We want those managed absolutely, regardless of usage. However, home theater acoustics has its own set of requirements. So let's take a look at why that's so. Home theater, what do we have? We have multiple sources within the room interjecting energy. They're all in different positions in the room. Of course, this is the goal of, of uh, home theater acoustics, and that's to envelop the listener in this surround type of experience. So our goal from a manufacturing, speaker manufacturing standpoint, we'll take a little poke at the speaker manufacturers here, is obviously to sell more speakers because that helps them. But as engineers and acousticians, it makes our job really difficult because we have all these sources. Two sources for two channel is a challenge. When you have all of these sources, you have to be extra careful in how you treat the room. So we have all these multiple mono sources. Plus, we have the low frequency effect channel. This is the subwoofer channel. We can have one subwoofer. We can have two. I've seen four. I've seen six. So we have extra channels devoted to producing low frequency energy. And obviously, this is for the uh, explosions, crashes, and, and things like that that are so prevalent in home theater acoustics. So the bottom line here is we have all these sources, we have all of these low frequency generating sources, we have lots of pressure, low frequency pressure in the room. It's just common sense with all these sources with additional low frequency effect channels that we're going to have more sound pressure to deal with. And obviously, reflections are critical. The reflections for this front part of the room, with the left, right, and center channel, this sound field created by these three channels is completely different from the sound field that's created by the side channels. Each acoustical objective is different with the sound field that these create. It's also different from the rears. The rears and the front are drastically different, just not, uh, not equal at all. The sides are different than both. So we have to take all of these sound fields created by all of these sources and manage them correctly if the listening position is going to uh, reap the benefits of a properly designed home theater acoustical situation. So we have front, we have center, which we all know is our vocals. So we have a strong desire to have high speech intelligibility with our center channel. And then we have to control the reflections off the sidewall, critical at the listening position, so that when that airplane flies left screen to right screen, the sound follows. If the time signature of the reflections in your home theater are not set up correctly, the sound won't follow the image, and therefore you haven't uh, done a good job in your home theater acoustics. So reflections from the sidewalls, all of this uh, direct energy from the front, very, very critical at the listening position. What's our goal with the sides? Non-localization of sound, ambient sound field well distributed. So we don't want to hear and be able to locate where these side channel speakers are. We want to hear the energy and, and the ambient levels that they produce. Same with the rears. So we have a, a completely different sound field generated from all of these positions. So we have to take that into account in our home theater acoustic program. And obviously the management of low frequency energy is critical. And um, if you want verification of that statement, just ask the other members that live in the house or the, the adjacent rooms, and you'll quickly get an answer there. So three distinct sound fields, three distinct, 
distinct areas of treatment. The sealing is also another critical area. The sealing uh, can be all absorptive, it can be diffusive. It depends on what you've done with these three sound fields. So in future videos, we'll actually get into the, the treatment uh, applications for each of these areas. But for now, you have to realize that there's three real genuine sound fields created in a home theater uh, environment with front, sides, and rear channels. So uh, we need to keep those uh, properly addressed. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up so I know that it had value to you. And please, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. Alternatively, if there are other topics that you wish to discuss, discuss or see discussed in a video presentation, send me a, an email, info at acousticfields.com and uh, we'll get them on our list and, and get them done for you. I release a new uh, video about every week, so stay tuned to our YouTube channel and keep uh, updated on our new videos.